our service this morning. We are just going to open with a word of prayer. Shall we just pray together? Father, we ever come before thee again this morning. We do just pray for thy help and wisdom as we seek to open thy word, the Bible, and speak concerning the Lord Jesus Christ as the only Saviour of sinners. We do just pray, Father, that we would just be given help as we seek to just proclaim him and him crucified. We give thee the utmost thanks and praise now in his precious and worthy name. Amen. If you have a Bible, please, can we turn to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians and chapter 1. 1 Corinthians and chapter 1. And while people search for that, Paul here is talking to the Corinthian believers and he is told of divisions among the people of how different ones are saying that they are of Paul and of, of other ones and Paul tells them is Christ divided and he's not and we get to the verses and we're going to start reading from verse 17 from verse 17 and Paul says this to the to the to those of the Corinthian believers for Christ in verse 17 for Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel not with wisdom of words lest the cross of Christ should be made of non effect. For the preaching, excuse me, of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the proven. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than man. We know that God will bless the reading of his precious word to us. You know something? We can come along here or we can listen online or we could be in other parts we've had it before where we've been out in the open air and we've been preaching concerning the Lord Jesus Christ and many people can have different thoughts and different ideas when it comes to the preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ some can look upon it and they can see and think, well, okay, they're talking about a man here who was in history. Others might say, well, they're here and they're telling me about somebody who was a good person. But he doesn't really relate to me now and I don't really have any thought about him. Others may think, why are they talking 
about this person called Jesus. This is foolish. This is silly. Why would you preach concerning this man? And what did we read here? <coughs> we read here that some believed that it was foolishness. Some believed that it wasn't needed. But there were also those which believed. Dear friend, we come week after week. And we don't come here to preach about ourselves. We don't come here to say that we are good or we are bad or we are this or that. We simply come and we simply gather to preach Christ crucified. Why? Why do we come and why do we gather and why do we preach Christ crucified? Do you know something? This message that we proclaim and preach, it doesn't come from ourselves, but it comes from God. And this message that we tell men, women and boys and girls about, it isn't a popular message. It's not a message that lots of crowds of people, they want to hear, they want to listen to. For a lot of people, they think about this message concerning the Lord Jesus Christ as foolishness. It's something that people think, well, I don't need him. I don't want him in my life. But the Bible makes it extremely clear that without the Lord Jesus Christ, we have no hope we have no assurance do you know today there are many people out and they are running a race they are running a race the great north run and they are running a race and they've all been training and getting ready for this great event and what is the goal what is the goal well some people might say well the goal is that they are running for charities and to help give more of awareness to those things it might also be that people enjoy running and they want to get fit. But what is the goal of this? The goal is to get to the end and to finish that race. Well, dear friend, what about the race of life? What about our final destination? Have we ever thought about that? Have we ever thought about what happens when we die? What happens when this life of ours is over? Because many people, they believe, well, once we die, that is it. That is it. There is nothing else. Well, the Bible tells us something completely different. The Bible makes it clear that we have a never-dying soul. And that we have to make sure that we are prepared and we are ready to meet God. <laughs> and what of people who have gone on today to the Great North Run, what are they doing? They've had to get prepared. They've had to get ready for that race that they are doing. To make sure that they are prepared for what lies ahead. I couldn't, dear friend, in the condition that I am in, just go to that starting point today and run the Great North Run. Because I would fail. Because I am not prepared and I am not ready. I haven't done those things for me to be able to run that race. 
But what about the Lord Jesus Christ? What about him? Because, dear friend, are we ready, are we prepared to meet God? Are we organised? Are we ready? Well, what do you mean? Well, dear friend, if you've listened on a Sunday morning, or if you've been here before on a Sunday morning in the hall, you know that the Bible tells us that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because of our sin, it has separated us from him. But the wonderful message of the gospel, which is good news, is that the Lord Jesus Christ wants none to perish. He wants none to perish. And all to be saved. And for us to be prepared for the future, for us to be, for us to be prepared, we have to get right with God. We have to be ready to meet him. And how can we know that we are ready to meet him? By putting our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. What did Paul say? Paul said that he came not to baptise, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. We don't gather here to give wisdom and thoughts of ourselves. Because it's of no effect. We simply want to turn you to the one who saves. The one who has done it all. The Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friend, there is none other. There is no other way. That's why at the back of our hall here, we have the words that we've read in our Bible this morning. We preach Christ crucified. Why do we preach Christ crucified? We preach Christ crucified because he is the only way of salvation. And we can only know our sins forgiven if we put our faith and trust in him. It's not of our own wisdom. It's not of our own knowledge. It's not what we can do. It's what the Lord Jesus Christ has already done. Our wisdom, our knowledge, our understanding. It's no good. We have to simply come to him. He is the one, who, dear friend, who's paid it all. He's done everything possible that we can know him. He's done everything possible that we can be saved. He loves you. He died for you. Are we prepared to meet him? Are we ready? Are we ready to meet him? Oh dear friend, you know something? You will meet him. You will meet him. Every one of us will meet him. And you know what the terrible thing would be? For him, for you to come to him, and for him to say to you, depart from me, for I never knew you. Do you know something? There'll be many people who'll come to him and say, well, I came to Bethesda in Hartlepool. I came to Sunday school. I know John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And sadly, dear friend, he will say, Depart from me, for I never knew you. Why? Because we can know... John 3.16, we can know other verses from the Bible. We can know hymns 
from the hymn book. We can know bits from about the Lord Jesus Christ. But do we know him? Think about that. Do we know him? We can know all about him. But do we have a personal relationship with him? Can you say now where you're sat or whatever you're doing in your home? Can you say of a truth? He is my saviour. Can you say there was a point in your life when you turned away from your sin and put your faith and your trust in him? Because dear friend, if you can't, then you are still in your sin and away from God. But God wants no one to perish. He wants all to come to him and believe. And all that come to him will be saved. There is no doubt. There is no doubt. That is the wonderful message of God's love for you and I. It is for the whosoever. The Bible makes it clear. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. But we can know all that we have to do and still not do it. And still not be prepared and still not be ready. And dear friend, there comes a point in life when it is just too late. Do you know something? We can put things off, can't we? We can put things off. If you get an invitation, if you get an invitation, say you get an invitation to a party and it's in the post, and what, what is usually on the slip that somebody sends? RSVP. There is a time that you need to respond by. There is a point that you need to respond to that invitation. And if it gets beyond that point, then you are too late to accept or reject that invitation. You are too late. Well, dear friend, it is the same with the Lord Jesus Christ. There comes a point in time when it is too late. You will not get another opportunity. Maybe this is the only opportunity you are going to have now, where you are, to trust on him. He's giving you this opportunity now. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. What will you do with him? What does our Bible tell us? We'll read it again. For the preaching of the cross, verse 18, is to them that perish foolishness. But there's a but. Oh, and that's wonderful because listen to this. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Oh, dear friend, are you saved? Can you say you know him? Can you say he's my saviour? He's my Lord? He wants you to be his. He's done it all possible. Or will you just go away the same condition you came in with? Away from God. And without hope. And without assurance. We preach Christ crucified. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, 
Christ, the power of God and wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than man, and the weakness of God is stronger than man. Oh dear friend, we need to call upon him. We need to trust in him. We need to accept him. But what will you do? What will you do with him? This may be the only opportunity you have. You may not be given another one. This isn't something to just be messed around with. Or you might say, well, Jonathan, you say this message week after week. You come week after week and you keep saying week after week. This may be the last time. And dear friend, it may be. We don't know what tomorrow holds. But we do know what the future holds. And it's either with him or it's without him. It's in Christ or without Christ. And the decision that we make will not only affect us for now, but it affects us for all eternity. It isn't something to be messed around with. It isn't something to just be blasé about. We have to truly consider what God is saying to us. And the question comes clear. And the question comes firm. And on this I will finish. Where will you spend eternity? Now you don't need to tell me, dear friend. But answer that yourself. Where will you spend eternity? Heaven with him? Or hell away from him? I don't want him. I don't need him. There's only two destinations, dear friend. Where will you spend eternity? Shall we pray? <coughs> Father, we know that thou wast want none to perish. That is why the Lord Jesus Christ came. That men, women and boys and girls would be saved. We pray even now for salvation. We pray even now, O oh Father, that there would be those who would simply come and trust on him for themselves. We do pray for safety on the roads. We do pray for guidance. We give thee the utmost thanks and praise in his precious and worthy name. Amen.